This is the part two of last week's video. I continue to review your artwork. Let's see who we are talking about today. Come on. You know how some people cover famous songs and suddenly the cover become more famous than the original song. Well, I feel it that way here. I think this drawing is much better than the original photo. My opinion. Great job. I really don't see any problem in the scales and the and the color choices, how you use the colors. It's amazing actually how you did those folds with different color choices and how you blend it so well, so smoothly that it looks so realistic. And if you're interested in learning how to do that blurry background is basically you use a solvent and once you use that solvent, it, they can actually blend each other just like that. Or you can use pastels for the background. Once you blend them with your finger, you can get this blurry look. The only thing maybe, maybe, I'm not even sure, I would do differently if I drew this would maybe challenge myself and do that hand part also blurry other than that we have an oil painting in the list I am I'm so happy about this you can see that this is a very creative art I love the details you can tell the artist spent so much time on it and I think the the message is also deep and I really love the artistic way of expressing themselves. I really, really appreciate it. The only thing I realized was like uh, around the lips, I think the paint was not contained that well. And I think the transition from the skin to the background around here on the neck area could have been done better, more maybe like a little bit using more paint there maybe, but it's just my opinion, of course. And another thing that I want to add is um, about the color choices. So I love this green and yellow, by the way. They are my favorite, one of my favorite colors. The only reason I cannot wear green here is like I use green screen for this week tutorials. If I were you, I would also try to use some complementary colors. If you don't know what complementary colors are, remember the color wheel. So the color wheel, when you look at the color wheel, the, the colors that are opposite from each other, they are complementary colors. When they are used together in the same painting, they pop out. So I did one for you. I hope you don't hate me because I played with your painting just a little bit. But I want to show you what I'm trying to say. Here's an example of a different way of coloring. So the complementary color of green is purple, so I used some purple. And complementary color of yellow is blue, so I added some blue. And you see, like when you use them together, I think they pop out more. But again, just an opinion. Yellow flower emerald drew these beautiful horses and the horsemen. So she told me that she didn't use any initial sketch. She just didn't use any kind of scaling, like grid method or anything like that. So she did it from her head, which is fine. But I will show you why this could be risky, especially in the beginning of your artist's career. The horses are great. So many details, so detailistic, and I really love how you used your uh, values. I think those value changes in each of those horses is just perfect. Maybe I just would do the, the folding effect on the pants just a little bit more differently. But other than that, I think your shading is great. So let's come to scaling. So what I would change is, for example, the arm is a little bit too long. You know how when we're teenagers, our arms are longer than our torso and like so much that, you know, we look like walking orangutans. Like that's how I felt when I was a teenager. So that kind of reminded me of that. Other than that, the hand is a little bit too big. Um, it's almost the as big as the face. So this is what happens when we actually drew from just by looking. So this kind of discrepancies happen. And finally, the angle of the leg while sitting, it doesn't look that realistic because it's really hard to do this one when you just like bend it over that much. So this is a very successful colored pencil portrait, perfect scaling, perfect shading. I see that you use monochrome 
a little bit because I see that the eyes are actually green but you use the same brown tones and for the lips as well so I'm assuming that you wanted to go monochrome which is fine I think it's beautiful and the hair amazing you know doing hair with especially colored pencils is very tough I will have a few suggestions I see that um, there's a little bit like white of the paper is showing we don't want that if we are doing a very realistic um, portrait but some people do it this way that's fine but I don't prefer doing it in mine if and if you want more smooth results there and you want to close those white areas I highly recommend to do more layers and with a sharpened pencil all the time so that's the way to fill out those whites and the other thing I wanted to mention is the darkness of some areas I'm gonna show them with red arrows right here so around these areas if you use a little bit more sepia maybe uh, a little bit darker then it would create more depth if you are a person who switched from doing just charcoal or graphite drawing to colored pencil drawing and you're new to colored pencil drawing then then you tend to apply the same techniques that you use to colored pencils but they are so different so if you're one of those people then you tend to use less type of colors less variety of colors but you try to give that variation of you know darkness and light by applying more pressure to less pressure because that's how graphite and charcoal works but when it comes to colored pencils you should do that with different colors instead of applying more or less pressure with the same color for instance I would use uh, sepia for here more and when it comes to the nose area for the shadow I would maybe choose burnt sienna tone because it looks a little bit more reddish and when it comes to the cheek area that the shadow from sepia going to the normal uh, tone of the skin there is a little bit of peachy like pinky orangey kind of mixture color so I would try to use that color and when it comes to the area here I think the artist's choice was right but I would just apply more layers to give a more shadowy look this is from the same artist and usually I don't use two drawings from the same artist in this single video but nobody else sent me a toned paper work so because toned paper has a different kind of strategy and I wanted to talk to you about that when you draw on toned paper the midtones are already there so you have to focus on more like highlights and shadows right I think this artist did a great job there you see that you know the shadows are great and the hair is done perfectly and you see those white charcoal areas let me show you those are great highlights I really like that and also they realize this part of the face is darker than the other part and they gave that shadow difference very nicely as well the eyes the lips are so realistic only thing I would change maybe the highlight on the nose is very straight in the drawing but in the reference photo that looks like a curve and if you add that maybe it could change how it looks and one more thing I would change I think adding a little bit more shadows around this area and that area and also there is a part on the neck finally art by James Butler so this is a very cute dog and ladies and gentlemen let's be honest drawing a white dog is tough so you're using charcoal you're using graphite pencils which are black and you're drawing a white dog how is that even possible so this is why I wanted to draw your attention here and also the background is tough because the the owner of the dog is there you you see the hand drawing hand is difficult you see the hair you see the clothing so it's a it's a hard piece I really liked how they gave the fur details the eyes are perfect the ears they're so cute the pals the pals are difficult and you did a great job a few things to mention here for example about the scales there are a few things off for example when you draw a line from the beginning of the hat to the to the top of the eye it looks like your drawing has a little bit shorter distance there and the second is like detail right here in the yellow circle uh, you draw them like straight fur but I feel like they are curved so not a big detail again but it's a detail right sometimes in order to decide if my scaling is right or wrong I do this in the middle of my drawing I drew a flat line starting from where the hand ends 
and try to see where the job is in reference to that line. And I see that when I do that in the reference photo and your drawing, the jaw of the dog is a little bit further. By the way, I think you did a great job with the nose. The dog nose is difficult to make and I would prefer charcoal as well. You did a great job with charcoal, but the underneath part of that nose, the dark, the shadowy part, I wouldn't use charcoal pencil. Maybe I would go a little bit lighter than that. I could dip my maybe brush into charcoal dust and apply it there a little bit or maybe I would use like a higher graphite grade maybe like 6B or 8B or you know something like that because if you do them equally black then the nose doesn't look that apart from that shadow you know and the same thing around the chest area I feel like I can see some eraser marks there in order to kind of you know, avoid that you can maybe use the charcoal dust again with the brush the dust of the charcoal is easier to erase and also easier to apply less risky so finally in the back of the dog i think i would add a little bit more fur details there with my stick eraser just like flying hair you know i would add flying fur i think it would make it much more realistic the last one I wanted to talk about is by Art by Nisa. Jack Sparrow character from Pirates of Caribbean. The first thing I want to say that your midtones are there, your shadows are there and good job with the highlights as well. There are a few issues about the scaling but definitely not big issues. I will mention all of them in a second, especially the eye looks like a little bit off but I will explain the reason. The first thing I want to talk about these dark lines that are surrounding the fabric on his head. We can make these folds and the folding effect much more realistic by just using a technique that I'm about to explain to you. This is from my video, uh, how to draw clothes. You can see that for each fold, we need to create some degree of um, you know shades and values so I go from darkest to lightest by using different pencils 4b 2b to hb or sometimes even I release the pressure on my pencil so that I get a darker shade and then I blend and erase and I draw again here the same thing happens with the nose and the lips as well I see that dark line just surrounding the nose and the lip borders. We should avoid that for realistic portraits. What we can do instead of doing that is again, the same method, bed method, blending, erasing and drawing. We do draw the shadows first, we lock them in and then we blend. After we blend, we go over with our mid-tone pencil, maybe 4B, maybe 2B and try to create a more solid mid-tone. We don't touch the highlights, we just leave them alone because as we blend, they have this natural value anyways. But then, of course, for the brightest parts, we always go and erase either using our kneaded eraser or pencil eraser. I did the same thing, very same thing to the lips as well, as you can see. Once we do maybe five or six layers, you will have your realistic nose with realistic borders instead of having these very thick lines. The other thing I want to talk about is the beard. The beard needs to be a little bit longer and thinner, just like the reference photo. And another thing I want to talk about the eyes, as I mentioned before, if you draw a horizontal line starting from the eyeball and to the other end, and you copy and paste it to the other eye, you will see that the left eye is much bigger than the right eye. We need to get these right. We need to get these dimensions right. Otherwise, our portrait will look really off. And finally, I want to talk about the cheek and this jaw area. The cheek area is a little bit cut short in yours. So if you, I mean, basically you need more cheek there. <laughs> if you can just erase that part and add more cheek and shadow on it, then I think it would look much more realistic. That's it for this week, guys. 
next week I'm going to draw a new thing. We are kind of giving a pause to our reviews, but of course I will do more reviews in the future. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thanks for watching my video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And for my real-time narrated tutorials, visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Stay with art and love.